Aloha and welcome back to our UH West Oahu garden. Today we're actually coming out with a bonus workshop video for our campus's Eola Pono week. Um, and so we'll actually be going into my kitchen and joining my partner Jamil, who will be making a yuca gnocchi. If you're not familiar with gnocchi, it's basically a kind of pasta made with potatoes and flour. But instead of potatoes today, we'll be using yuca as the starch. And so yuca, which is this plant here, uh, is a root vegetable. You can actually also eat the young leaves. Um, you can boil them and put them in soups or um, curries as a leafy green vegetable. But today we're going to be using the corms, the roots. Um, yuca is known by many names manioc, cassava, tapioca, etc. Um, and it's a staple crop in many cultures around the world, including Latin America. I'm waiting for this wind to die down. Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa, Southeast Asia. And um, you can find them in the frozen section usually at Asian grocery stores um, and the reason why we don't really see them fresh is that the roots begin to oxidize and decompose really quickly after harvesting um, so if you can't really find it but you have some room in your garden or a backyard to grow these in the ground um, because they are a root they'll expand outward um, from the cutting that you plant but if you have the space and you're interested, um, we are growing about four or five different varieties here in our garden and are happy to share cuttings when we have them. So I'm going to leave our UH West Oahu garden um, Instagram page handle or whatever that's called um, and also my email if you don't have Instagram. And feel free to contact me and we can coordinate getting those cuttings to you. Um, a cutting is the easiest way to propagate or grow um, a plant. You basically just take a part of the stem and put it in the ground. Um, yucca is drought tolerant, super easy to grow. Um, and usually after you plant it... Sorry, I'm waiting for this plane to fly by. Okay. And usually after you plant the cutting, uh, it takes about six to nine months to be ready to harvest. Um, you can harvest up to about a year and a half, 18 months old, but I like to harvest around nine months because at that point the roots are still young enough that um, they aren't so woody. You sh sometimes when the, when the plant is older, the middle of the root will kind of break a little bit, crack, and there will be air in there and um, the root will dry out from the inside out. Uh, we'll talk about this in the workshop, but there's also a fibrous thread that runs through the center of the corn, or sorry, I keep saying corn, that runs through the center of the root. And um, this also gets thicker and thicker the older the plant is. So I think that's it. If you have any other questions or you want to nerd out about yucca plants with me. Um, again, feel free to contact me at my email address or through Instagram. Um, okay, so let's get started and head into my kitchen. Buenos días, um, aloha kakahiaka. Uh, mi nombre es Jamil, my name is Jamil. I'm from Puerto Rico originally, but now I'm super blessed to live in Hawaii, especially in Oahu, in Waianae. So today I'm gonna teach you how to make um, cassava gnocchi. That's how a lot of Americans call it. We call it back home yuca. Yuca is one of our most sacred crops we have back home. So how you guys have a connection with haloa and kalo, we have it a lot with yuca, yeah? It's one of our ancestral food. Originally, it came from Latin America, from South America, but it's very common, yeah? Not only in the Caribbeans, but in places in Africa, and here in Hawaii too, yeah? 
So this is yuca made by my beautiful, well, grew by my beautiful wahine, Tasha. And so shout out to Tasha and to U.S. West Oahu Sustainable Community Garden. I think that's the name. Anyways, so we're gonna start first. Now that you see the yuca, big, big yuca, yeah? We're gonna cut it. I usually just cut the edges first. Oof, this is gonna be a starchy one. I cut it close to the, you have to go a little bit further so down. Now. Yeah. It's supposed to be easier, but no worries. There we go. There we go. So a lot of people don't like cooking with yuca um, because they think it's a little bit intimidated first. But for real, it's the same as a potato, yeah? So like if you want to know like how to cook yuca or you're new to it, either just get a potato recipe and substitute it with yuca, which is what we're going to do today. That's why we're making gnocchi. Or just like make yuca flour, yeah? And just try to bake with it too. So we're gonna take the edges off, that was easier. So this is a lot, yeah? I know it doesn't look a lot, but remember, we're gonna make a dough out of the yuca, right? So we're gonna use the yuca, we're gonna boil it. We're gonna mix it with a little bit of flour. Yes, you can use cassava flour too, if you wanna make this like 100% yuca, uh, yucalicious, if you want to. But for now, we're just gonna use real, um, common flour, like wheat flour, cause I know, I think it's more everyday household kind of thing, you know, for you guys. So I don't need the whole yuca. So we're gonna just cut it in half again. Oh, that was so easy, that was so nice. That was beautiful. You like that sound? I love it. So we have to peel it. Mostly because like kalo, like yuca says like nine to like a, nine months to so almost like 11 to 12 months, like a baby kind. Well, no baby stays 12 months, but like nine months to the ground. So you don't want to have that first like soily layer, yeah? And I know a lot of people think like, oh, yuca is poisonous if you don't boil it, um, boil it well. And it's true. There's a mo'olelo um, back home when I was growing up, yeah? I remember my grandpa always told me. Um, so the Tainos, the Arawakans, that's like the indigenous people, like you have the Kanakas, we're Arawakans, Tainos. So they used to use the arrows, the tip of the arrows, they used to like um, boil a lot of the yuca. I don't know if they use the corn or they use a lot of the leaf, I don't know which part they use it, but they make like a high concentration and they like, um, how do you call that in English, like, how do you call that? Coat. Deep, like coat the arrowhead. So it would be like a, I thought it was cool. So you guys like one of the most medicinal food, but also we can use it to defend ourselves, yeah? So now we're gonna do the second part of the gnocchi. We're gonna boil it, yeah? So while we boil the yuca, we're gonna start making the sauce. I myself like meat. I know a lot of people that are watching probably are vegetarians or have different diets. The good thing about yuca that besides being gluten free and paleo diet and all that good stuff that y'all do, right? Uh, you can mash it with meat or without meat. So the sauce we're gonna make is gonna be like a sage, um, oregano, pork belly sauce, which is gonna be great with the starchiness of the yuca. Cause remember, we're using this like a potato. So it will soak flavors, yeah? That's the good things about having high carbohydrates in like, in your diet for me as a cook yeah and as a dieter because he absorbs all the beautiful uses of your sauces or your broths and stuff yeah so again we're only cooking for two here but if you i'm not really good at recipe stuff so if you want to make more than two portions see what i'm doing and just double it i guess so we're gonna cut and slice like this right on so usually this will be even so we can cook it evenly we're gonna put it let me put my coffee here we're gonna put it in boiling water yeah Remember, the water must be just right eh? So we're gonna put all those pieces there. And I usually cook it for like 25 to 30 minutes, but you know what, like my mom always tell me like the food tells you when it's ready, right? I can tell you 30 minutes with my yuca, but maybe your yuca is telling you 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Just try to like sense it, yeah, vibe. Try to like have a frequency with the yuca. So you can tell, usually I do like a, a, exactly as a potato, yeah? Use the same potato. Get a fork and try to like um, 
Now stab it, yeah, you say stab. Stab the fork, and if you stay starting to get in, you'll know it's ready, yeah? Um, usually when it's that soft, you can say that all the arsenic, you know, it's already been released, yeah? Also, most of the arsenic is really in the coating. That's why they do like a broth, yeah? Okay, so we'll be right back with the sauce, and just give me a minute. So, we're gonna start doing the sauce, yeah? First of all, shout out to Mountain View Adam Y and I. This is amazing pork belly. Pork belly is one of my favorite part of the pig. Listen, if there's something Puerto Ricans like, it's yuca and pig. Just give me that, we're gonna be friends. I'm plantains. So anyways, shout out to Mountain View. Buy local, eat local. You know, it's good for the economy and it's good for the soul. We're just gonna use a little bit of it, right? Um, this is gonna be more of a butter sage sauce, cause you know, like, Hipsters are into that stuff, like a lot of like new people and hipsters, they like sage for some reason. We use sage to like keep the spirits away, but you can use it also to eat, yeah? So we're gonna use a little bit of the pork belly, cause it's not, you don't want it to be, what's the way I'm looking? You don't want the sauce to be, like the palate of the sauce to be more meaty. You want it actually to be more buttery, garlic, sagey, yeah? You want those herbal, herbal or undertones, yeah? So I'm not gonna do a lot. This part is beautiful for chicharrone, which is a, something else we can do. Save, save the skin, yeah? And then either deep fry it. Oh my God, it's gonna change your life. We're gonna use actually the meat side of the pork belly a little bit more. Um, if you wanna do this and cut it, but then you're gonna have more fat content. So I usually just gonna use the meat right now. You don't need a lot. Just let's get a couple of slabs. This will be a good portion. Don't ask me about measurements. Just, again, just look and fill or email me, whatever. This will be a good measurement for a little bit of sauce because you just want having that fat, 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 um, I don't know, like on the, on the taste in the sauce, but still remember the start of the sauce is going to be the sage on the bottom, right? So we're going to cut it in little pieces. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Leave the fat too, yeah? Always leave the fat. I don't understand why people take the fat out of stuff, yeah? It's good, fat is good. Who told you it's bad? Okay, we're good with that. So, we're gonna start in the sauce, yeah? Why does butter smell good? Ooh, look at that sound. We can do, what's it, how do you call it? AMSR? We could do ASMR. An ASMR, we should do an ASMR next time. We're gonna melt that butter, brown that butter. Butter! And then we're gonna put the pork real quick, real fast. Why the pork first and not the onions, um, not the garlic or the herbs? Because remember, we want that to be like the, the last thing so it can absorb everything. So just make sure the pork is a little bit brown. So now that we're starting the sauce, yeah? So we put in the sides and like, uh, medium, low, low, medium. I don't know how to say correct English. So it's the butter and the pork right now. Yeah, we have to do the stage again. Shout out to Yeshua Sawahu. This is stage also grown by the garden over there. Super important too. Yeah, the more close to the source, the better. So now in the time of COVID, it's perfect for everybody to start doing a little garden. Yeah, maybe an herb garden. Just maybe some cilantro, some sage, the basic. Yeah. So we're gonna cut the sage. Not using the pork knife. Don't worry. Um. Big chunks is okay. So now that we have the butter on the pork, yeah, we're gonna put like a quarter of sage. Sprinkle that sage. We're gonna put some garlic, um, around five cl cloves is okay. Listen, I love garlic. It's really good for you. It has so many medicinal properties, the more the better. And then we're gonna do, you don't wanna have more oregano than sage. So if you did a quarter of the sage oregano also from the garden they have everything there if you need anything just haul out the usual wahoo we're gonna put just a sprinkle of oregano now we just want this sauce we're gonna mix it all together oh freaking that looks so good you're gonna keep it in low and just let it um simmer for like maybe 10 minutes um if you can see the yuca is almost ready all right so yeah, just give us 10 more minutes and we'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, 
So now that the juca is already boiled, yeah, that's why around 20 to 30 minutes, depending how the juca is feeling that day on the moon, right? You drain it. Oops! We're gonna mash it, yeah? This will be a great activity if you're like homeschooling your kids or like, I don't know, distance learning, you know the business. Have your kids do this. This could be their exercise, yeah? So we're gonna work, get physical right now. We're just gonna mash the yuca. Oh my God, it looks so beautiful. I think this one, is this the Brazilian one? No, it's just the regular yellow. So, oh, so this is a good thing. There are different kinds of yuca, yeah? Like kalo, like you know, you have different varieties of kalo. There's different var varieties of cassava. Um, I'm gonna use the word yuca a lot. That's like more a cultural world, uh, word for me, yeah? Because I'm Puerto Rican. Um, it's a beautiful yellow. I recommend yellow for if you wanna fry yuca, if you wanna do like more potato stuff, do the yellow. The white for me is really good for making flour. If you wanna make like, maybe we can do something later on on that, but white yuca is better for the flour. It has to do a lot with the starch content. I really don't know the exact science, but like if you're really into it, Google it, yeah? But yellow yuca is my favorite to cook in. I think it absorbs flavors actually better. I don't know why. So we're gonna mash it. Wait until it cools down a little bit. I know a lot of people like to match it when it's warm, which is perfect, but we always wanna have like the homeostasis of the yuca or something. Like we always want it to be balanced. So I wait until it's a little bit cold because we're gonna make like a, not a masa, but like a dough. Like if we're making pasta, right? Which is what we're making. So just mash it. Does it get gummy if you um, mash it when it's hot? It doesn't get gummy, but then like the thing is like if you mash it when it's hot, it's gonna just like deteriorate a little bit quicker. And you wanna have still that solid consist, um, how do you call that? You want the consistency to be still solid, yeah? So I think when it's like hot, warmer, and you just mash it, it's gonna be more puree than match. And we're looking more for a mash co um, consistent consistency. We're not looking for a puree one, right? So while we mash the yuca, you're gonna see um, some pieces are not matching. It's because it's more fiber content. It's a little bit more like hardened, like wood, yeah, like fiber. So we're gonna take that out, yeah? Cause we wanna make a consistent dough. So a lot of people, and by a lot of people, I mean my mom, she will take this out before boiling, yeah? So the, how I cut it, my mom actually will cut it in half, take that out and not even worry about it and boil it. I like doing things easier. So for me, this is easier, yeah? Depends on the recipe. Like obviously you don't want it to have more flour than yuca, but it's the purpose. Um, you can do a quarter, like the if you go online and you like Google this, it's gonna say like a quarter of flour. I just go by what seems right to me, <laughs> if it makes sense. So oh, this looks so beautiful. Okay, put this aside. Always flour your cutting board. It's important, yeah, because like things will stick, yeah. Make sure it's really nice and flour. I will just eyeball it. This is a quarter cup, uh, but I didn't fill it all the way in. I will just start adding a little bit of flour and start kneading it. And as you knead it, you can see all the fibers popping out, yeah? And that's why I like it, because like, the more you knead, um, knead the dough, the, the smoother it will be, right? Yep. Perfect. I just need. And then, tutu. -tu, look at this. Oh, look at this. Maya, yeah. Put a little more flour. And this will be really already good to you know, to roll out. So again, you're like, oh, but how is this gonna fit so many people? Yeah, it's gnocchi, yeah. So the sizes we're looking are small kind. I will make a ball, like a dough ball, another yuca. When it feels all um, the same, like I'm looking for bumps, yeah, for the fiber bumps. So just keep touching it until you see it's like a play dough, play dough consistency. Okay, perfect. So this is the part that you can think ahead. 
We're not gonna use all of this right now. Let's roll it. So this you can freeze you can freeze the dough if you want for later. The thing about pasta, this is my suggestion, is the fresher the better. Like I know a lot of people like you can do that. This is something my mom also does. Like she makes the whole dough and she just freezes already cutting gnocchi. But I think fresh everything is better, right? It's a little mess here. No, put all this stuff here. Perfect. And now it's the action, yeah? So we can just kind of start rolling the dough. Like if you're making breadsticks. Like piece of piece of breadstick. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Oh, look at this. It's like meditation. Beautiful. Try, this is something important though, like we want it to cook evenly. So you want to try to make sure um, the roll that you're doing is like consistent, the same like um, diameter. You don't want to have like a part too like skinnier than another, yeah? We're just gonna cut it, um, again I guess you guys want... Um, I usually just do like a pinch. And then just cut it. Oh yeah. Um, now I will take the pieces and like slowly, uh, how do you call what I'm doing right now? Like mold it, like mold it to be evenly. You want it to be evenly. So some people like the gnocchi smaller, some bigger. I think this is just a perfect size, like a bite size. Two two. All right. So you're gonna keep doing that with all. We have the water boiling so gnocchi literally takes one minute less maybe one to two minutes less so how you know it's done you're gonna put the gnocchi that's why you cover it in flour it's so important to cut cover in flour before you do this process um you coat it because as soon as you put the gnocchi it's gonna be super fast when it starts rising up when it keeps like rising up to the surface that's when you know it's ready right don't overcook the gnocchi but don't undercook the gnocchi the perfect thing is as soon as it's boiling you're gonna pick it up and plate it, yeah? But good. So we're gonna put it, and as soon as it's boiled, we're gonna scoop it, okay? Ready? Let's go. You can sing a song while you're doing this. Be famous, yeah? Get some juca from the farm. That's some wet ass gnocchi. Put some juca in the pot for that wet ass gnocchi. I'm talking wag, wag, wag. That's some wet ass gnocchi. Juca in a pot. Wet well, ass gnocchi, yeah? So you put it, it's boiling. It's quick, it's gonna be quick. So it's gonna be a couple of seconds. I can already see it's like rising in. Oh my God, it looks so beautiful. Um, You can use either a ladle or like, how you call that in English? Uh, a colador? Colander, a sieve. Co colander, whatever. But I like this ready, cause I got it ready to eat. So when you um, scoop it up, you can just plate it. It's already rising. And as soon as you see it rising, you see, super easy, less than a minute, yeah? You're gonna plate it. Um, try not to like plate it all together because it's kind of like um, solidify together. Make sure it has a little bit of room so you can um, enjoy every individual bite. If you leave it for so long, it's going to start breaking up. You don't want that. You don't want that consistency. Because you don't want puree again. We want like pasta, fresh pasta. Oh. 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 Then we're going to top it with some sauce. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. So where's the butter? Put some butter here, bro. Put some butter. Put some butter. And then. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, I like a lot of cheese. So I'm gonna pop, pop, pop. Put it here. And then a crack of fresh black pepper. Now is the best time to try it out. Remember, once again, um, cassava gnocchi or juca, yeah, for my Latinos, yeah. Um, with butter sage, with the sauce, with a butter, oregano, pork belly sage, yeah. Most of it is local, Mo well, all of it is local actually. Most of it is organic. Yosh was a Wahoo shout out. Let's try it out. Let's do this.
All right, thanks so much for joining us again. Um, I can attest to the fact that that gnocchi was really good. Um, I mopped it in like less than 10 seconds. Um, please join us for our next workshop video, which will be coming out hopefully around mid-October. Uh, we'll be joining Indrajit, who works here in the financial aid department um, and is also really passionate about coconuts. He is going to be teaching us how to weave the low, the leaves of the coconut, into a beautiful backpack that you can use you know, at the farmer's market or if you go um, harvesting in your garden. Um, find some fruits or flowers on a hike. It's a really cool biodegradable earth-friendly backpack. So please join us then and we'll see you next time. Thanks!